What's good everybody? Welcome to Life on Beagle Road. Today is Monday and you know what that means. It's my um, unofficial official Man Stuff Monday show. Boy Stuff. Man Stuff. Boy Stuff. We've been in the shop pretty much all morning uh, getting some work done. Robbie is my shop helper and I decided hey let's take a break and work on something for Robbie in his room because his room is a mess and he could use a little bit of help. Plus, because it's Man Stuff Monday, I'm gonna introduce you to a tool that maybe you already know about, maybe you don't, but uh, it's a tool that pretty much everybody should have, especially if you're a homesteader and especially if you don't have a whole lot of skills on how to do things in wood. So Robbie and I are gonna show you how to do it and how to use it. Stay tuned to find out what I'm talking about. All right, so what tool are we talking about? We're talking about the pocket hole jig. Now, a popular one that most people know about is the Craig jig. And I've got two versions of it. I used to have the, a different version, sold that one and got something different. And I'll show you what that is. But here in the shop, what we have is we have the, the single hole, we have the double hole, and then we also have this guy, which is the auto jig by Armor Tools. This is what I traded up to when I got rid of the other one, uh, the, the Craig K5 or K4, or I don't know, whatever. Had it, don't have it, got this now. What it does is it helps you to join two pieces of wood very, very easily. It takes a lot of the thinking out of it. You, you just can't get any easier than that. So let's talk a little bit about each one of these before we begin. Let's talk about the single hole. With the single hole, it actually comes with something that helps you to kind of set it up and put it where it belongs. It's a little bit more difficult to use than the other ones, simply because it doesn't have all the automatic stuff on it uh, that the other ones have. But it's also like 20 bucks or something like that. I don't even know. You clamp on the back end, uh, you put your wood underneath, clamp it there, and drill right in there, and it gives you a nice clean pocket hole that you can use to join it. This one here is one that I had for quite a long time. On the sides here, it's got these things that slide up and down based on the size of your wood. So if your wood is three quarters of an inch, you move it and you line it up based on having three quarters of an inch wood, clamp it down. It's got these nice little feet on it that lock it in, drill through there, you've got your holes. Now this last one is very, 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 very nice because it's all automatic, folks. You just stick your wood in there, pull back to the locking mechanism, pop it down, and you're good to go. That's pretty much it. Drill your holes, pop it back up, release it, and you're good. If you don't have a pocket jig, you need to get one because all you need is a jig, a drill, and you're set. Well, and some wood, and some screws, and some glue, whatever. Robbie and I have got some pine we're gonna work with, and we're gonna make a simple shelf, uh, make it look a little bit unsimple, so that way you can see actually how simple it is to make something that is still maybe a little complex. All right, let's get to it. wood is cut let's get the building the first thing I have to do is secure the auto jig to the table just take two drywall screws bang bang all done once that's done we can start putting our wood in but let me show you how easy it is to set this up all right Robbie grab a piece of wood all right go ahead buddy show everybody done right not only that, but to set the drill bit, the drill bit goes right in here and it'll set the collar on the drill bit exactly where it needs to be to drill through the wood. And then if you're unsure about what screw to use, right here, they've got all of the color coding to go with it. That jig there, it's not cheap. Uh, it is easy and quick, makes things simple, but yeah, not cheap. With this one here, the guides on the side tell you where to put it based on the thickness of your wood. So if it's three quarters of an inch, you put it three quarters of an inch. To set your bit, 
they've got this nice nifty little plastic thing that comes in a case, tells you where to put your bit, and it has some marks along the side, which make it super simple. So either way, either you get super convenient, a little convenient, you're good. All right, Robbie's gonna start marking the wood where he wants to drill his holes. That just gives him a basic guide as to where to place the piece of wood in the jig to drill his hole. All right, now it's time to start building. Robbie is gonna put the wood in the jig and start drilling his holes. Now you can see how really easy it is. One of the other reasons that the Armor Tool Auto Jig is pretty nice is because it uses these color-coded screws. It, it helps you to visually see them faster. It's really not that big of a deal, to be honest. I mean, just keep them in the box. It says inch and a quarter and you'll be good. Or whatever size they are. I've had this jig for quite a while now. I don't actually love it. I like the Craig one a lot better than this one but I've got it now, so I'm gonna live with it. All the holes have been drilled, and now we're ready to do the assembly, and you're gonna see how easily it makes the assembly. So we need some glue, we need some screws, and we need some all-important clamps. Now, I do have some special clamps that aren't necessary, but do make this a whole lot easier. All right, first thing we need to do, set out our pieces. We're gonna have two sides, a top and a bottom. This right angle clamp allows me to hold this piece in while I go ahead up here and just screw it into the wood. Once I get the first two screws in, I can take the clamp out. I like to use glue and screws because Emerson says it's for extra protection. So we've got one of the two shelves together. Okay, both boxes are together. Um, Ravi wanted me to put it together because, well, he said he wanted it to go faster. Now I'm gonna join these two boxes together and we're gonna make what should be a 90 degree corner shelf. One of the pieces here split, so I've got a clamp and some glue in there. That way by the time we're all done, it'll, it'll be set and ready to go. And there we have it, a big giant L shelf for Silly little video games and books. Robbie wants to go with the special walnut, so I'm gonna pop this open, mix it up, and he's gonna put the stain on for us. All right, folks, well, we hope you enjoyed uh, Robbie's little shelf build. Um, I kind of did because when you're making stuff for your 12-year-old son, he doesn't care if you didn't sand it or if it still has pencil marks on it or if you didn't use wood conditioner and it got all blotchy. He just wants it done. So those are my kind of projects and my kind of clients. <laughs> I can't stress enough 
Folks, about the Craig jig or the armor tool jig or whatever one you get, a pocket hole jig, it will definitely make a lot of your projects go a lot faster. If you're trying to make some planter boxes or you're trying to make some things to store your seeds in or you're trying to make some things to store all of the uh, potatoes that you harvested, this is definitely a way to go for some folks that maybe just don't have all the skills needed to make the things they want to make. It's simple, it's easy, and even a 12-year-old can do it. Have a great day, folks.